All right, everybody, welcome back to Feeling Your Passion Podcast. It is that time of the year again already. It's crazy how fast it comes. It's August 1st, 2024. Outerwear is here, just launched. Heydays is a month away, which doesn't feel right, to be honest. <laughs> and back by popular demand, I have Bill with me from Product Design. Uh, Bill knows everything and anything about this gear, whether riding it, the development side, testing it, the material, everything, working with our factories. Bill is the guy. And last year we sat down with him and he kind of gave us a, a buyer's guide, if you will, on what's new. So Bill, welcome back. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to get this season rolling. I know. I know. It's coming up quicker than, uh, like I said, I can't believe it's already August and heydays is a month away. Yeah. Came out of nowhere. Yeah, too hot out there. I think we're really uh, we're ready to get some some snow in the ground and yeah. get some riding in. I'm the type that would like snow 12 months a year, and a lot of people think, uh, you know, oh, once you get to be late 30s, 40s, you're going to get sick of that. <laughs> I don't think so. I've been like this for 27 plus years now, and uh, yeah, I'm committed to it. So I, I like a little cycle, but it's uh, it's good to get this season started. Yeah, uh, we got some cool new stuff to uh, to get out in the snow, and and excited to talk about it here. Right. Well, we got quite a bit of things to go over, so um, I think we kick it off with the tried and true, like a fan favorite, consumer favorite, the uh, S1 ignites. Yeah, we got some a uh, few new pieces here for the uh, the mountain crowd, but I think to start off, the uh, X7 and the Aviator S1 Ignites are uh, still really strong seller, high performer out in the mountains. Um, just so important to have clear visibility when you're riding. Totally, most important piece probably of of everything that you that you wear if you can't see. You're heading back to the truck. Mm -hmm. um, so the X7 uh, S1 is a great cylindrical lens, um, really a quick uh, magnetic lens on off, really easy to actually be able to change lens midday on the trail. And the battery does a great job of lasting uh, a full day. Um, the technology that we have in the S1 Ignite is a little bit more of a smart technology that uses temp and humidity sensors to tell the goggle when to turn on, when to turn off, has heat in the lens, also a fan, and does a great job of keeping that fog free. Yeah. Um, when, we, when we first came out with this frame, I mean, it was a, a game changer bringing it into the Ignite family, the, the magnetic lens. I mean, yeah. there's no more wires, no feeding anything through the frame. It's all just through the contact points. It's a... It's as easy as changing a lens on a non-ignite now. It's the same process. Yeah, it's uh, it's really fast. I think it's really a strong recommendation to have a couple lenses with you. If if light changes, if you've got uh, low light conditions or full sunny conditions, it's tough to get one lens to yeah. do it all. Uh, so a spare lens is, is great to have along as well. I think the X7 um really is a great fit in more of the xl 2x 3x helmets mm -hmm. um not hard and fast rules but i think you know the x7 is a little bit larger uh size uh, full format great visibility um and good peripheral vision and uh fits a little bit better in the larger size helmets yeah. um the Aviator, then, on the other hand, um, is a great goggle in more of the small, medium, large. And uh, the Aviator, really similar S1 Ignite Technologies, just has more of a Toric lens. The Toric is a, uh, a great lens, really good peripheral vision, kind of actually even almost makes you feel like you can see around a corner. Yeah. And um, always just really amazed how often you're kind of looking out of the side of of your uh vision to you know keep an eye on your slough or right. avalanche coming after you or buddy hitting a tree <laughs> or whatever but you're always really wanting that that peripheral uh views and the toric does a great job of that yeah the, the interesting thing with goggles is uh everybody's face i've said this year after year is everybody's face is a different shape yeah everybody's helmet is a different size and it's it's hard to say this one's the best one or this one's the best one. You you got to try them on. Like if you have an opportunity, sure. 
if you're at Hey Days, you're at an event, you're at your local dealer, and you can go in with your helmet, no matter what the brand is, um, and try the goggle on different frames, that's going to be the biggest thing because I hear people say, oh, I hate the X7. I love the X7. I hate the Aviator. I love the Aviator. Yeah. And it all comes down to cheekbones, noses, foreheads. Everything plays into it. I, I was hooked on the X7 for about a year. And then one day I forgot them and I had aviators in the truck. And then I was hooked back on the aviators for a year, <laughs> which is a good problem to have. I enjoy them both. But yeah, if yeah. I recommend if you have the opportunity to put them in your helmet and put your helmet on and get that, you know, really good fit and finish and dial in which one's better for your face. For sure. Um, we also offer the aviator an example uh, with an XL foam. So I'll use the aviator S1 Ignite really a lot. I love this goggle. It's a little bit, um, um, I don't know. I, I just, again, kind of that personal preference. Totally. Yeah. But with the XL foam, that does kind of just seal up the gaps a little bit better. I wear more of an XL helmet. And I'll probably go more with an XL foam on the Aviator. Um, also have the XL foam on the X7 if you are going up into that 2X, 3X. And, uh, you know, something I've been really even kind of working on with with some people trying to get this fitted right is adjusting uh trimming the xl foam a little bit if you're not wearing a five or nine helmet sometimes those eye ports are a little bit different shape and you mm -hmm. can you can trim it it's it's legal yeah it's uh it's all right to tune it fine tune in. custom fit yeah, yeah yeah so both of these are are available a lot of lens choices um definitely recommend uh just checking out a lot of our accessories that we have extra batteries lenses, lens case, mm -hmm. a lot of other things just to make sure you're you're good, solid, running all day, and then you can worry about uh, riding. Yeah, and of course, uh, the app. We've updated the app, a lot of revisions on it. It's pretty dialed now. Uh, Bluetooth, connect right to your phone, uh, set yeah. your parameters, decide if you want your fan on, off. There's a, there's a lot of adjustability within the app as well. Yeah, there is. Um App works really well to be able to tune that. Um, you can turn the fan on and off, uh, the heat on and off. And it does just allow you to keep up to date with the latest firmware. Yep. We've made a, uh, some firmware changes in some of these battery packs. So great to be able to just go in there and check, make sure uh, you don't have an update. Cool. Well, I know we got a lot of stuff here. Where do you want to dive into next? Yeah, I think um, some of the other new stuff that we have for 23 is a new Ether collection. The Ether collection from 509 is using a Sympatex material, a really pro-level, waterproof, breathable material. Very good at shedding water uh, and very good at uh, you know high-pressure waterproofness and, and breathability. Yeah. Um, jacket and bib both are, uh, revised this year. The jacket is really got some good, generous cargo pockets, uh, a lot of great features, um, really meant to kind of be that, that go-to piece in the mountains. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I, I've had two seasons now. Last year I did not order a new, uh, ether jacket. It just works well. Yeah. And I mean, that thing has been to hell and back. It's been... <laughs> To Alaska, to Sweden, all over Canada, all these different climates, different environments, snow densities. I mean, from the coastal, you know, heavy mashed potato snow to Wyoming, dry pow, and it just worked. It the is It is in a good sweet spot. It's a little bit of a lighter fabric than maybe some of our 5-tech, but still super durable mm -hmm. uh, and really good at, at shedding the elements. Um, the bib is also revised. We've got a little bit of a different, uh, leg zip option that allows you to be able to dump the seat if you got a nature call out there. Uh, so that is a really good feature to check out also using the, um, the Sympatex material. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've added a new color in the ether this year. So I'm pumped on the red. Yeah. I'm black and red all the time. So good. I'm excited for that. And then mono too. We have a mono also, also updated, um, also in some other colors, uh, using the same Sympatex material. Uh, again, just a couple little updates, uh, just really small tweaks, but um, really good fit, uh, generous enough to be able to wear protection underneath, yeah. but not a whole lot of extra. Um, enough room in the legs for knee braces really been some good feedback and and we just made some of those little adjustments 
um, really seeing that uh, that piece coming on and, yeah. and being more popular in our line. That's a big one. We're seeing it more and more just talking to consumers, um, people wearing knee braces all the time. And we've, including myself, there's a lot of us internally here that yeah. do as well. And we notice the pinch points, the wear points. I mean, when your knee brace is hitting your side panel there, it's basically just fabric between plastic on plastic, a uh, ton of friction. Yeah. And I remember from, I don't know, four years ago now, that some of the revisions that I've gone through with you and now, yeah. uh, not a single issue. Knee braces are just slamming into panels all year long and the pants stay exactly how they were from day one. Yeah. It's been, um, uh, just small little refinements. I think from a lot of the feedback from customers, uh, athletes, ambassadors, all of, all of those guys are hitting it pretty hard. We look at it. Um, it has a built-in knee pad. That knee pad helps if you don't have knee braces. It does soften the blow, but what we're finding is it also really helps protect the fabric totally. uh, between the changer. knee brace and the, and the machine. Yeah, that was a game changer. We added yeah. that, and now uh, my pants look great again. Yeah, yeah. good, good. <laughs> Yeah, so um, that is kind of the key pieces uh, in the mountain. We also have some new women's uh, in the mountain rider and or trail riding uh, collection, but we have a new boot. Um, it is the uh, new double boa women's uh, raid boot, packed in a little bit more insulation um, with a woman's last. We had a little bit more room there, so we went to 800 grams of insulation just for a That's little awesome. bit more warmth. Yeah. Um, still using the, uh, the BOA system with the, uh, the two reels, a little bit more of a kind of creature comfort microfiber fleece mm -hmm. on the inside, super warm and, and cozy. Is this a new BOA system here on the front? It almost looks like a revised, just updated, uh, visually it looks new. Yeah. BOA, BOA is really a great partner. We really enjoy working with some of these cool, innovative partners. They're constantly improving, uh, these reels, the, the mechanical advantage of these reels, a lot of the small improvements in the, uh, the guides and the feeds. And uh, we've incorporated a lot of this latest technology in the new women's uh, raid and uh, really makes the tightening and loosening, adjusting on and off yeah. so much easier right. than a and a lace up. I can't imagine using laces ever again in my <laughs> life. I, it's it's incredible to me that it still even exists in our industry. Yeah, it um, allows you to be able to fine tune more yeah. quickly instead of starting over and untying and and milking all the laces up to get it tight. I mean, it's 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 a hundred year old, yeah. five hundred year <laughs> yeah. old technology. But the BOA system allows you just be able to lift the pant leg up, give it a little twist, yeah. uh, adjust either the lower part or the upper, and really fine-tune that fit. Yeah. And then these uh, two colors, this emerald color we have here, and then a solid black boot also, which is, I mean, tried and true. It's, yeah. That goes with anything, yeah. no matter what color gear set you have. A lot of feedback from women riders. We're getting more and more women riders. Nadine Overwater, one of our athletes, just a, a, a awesome rider in general, yeah. let alone a, 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 a you know, advocate for women riding, uh, but a lot more women riders and definitely hearing a lot more of this feedback wanting product specific uh, mm -hmm. for women. So a uh, great new ad for the, uh, the mountain and, and trail riding segment with the, uh, the new Boa boot in the 800 gram, a little bit warmer, um, two sizes, uh, sorry, two colors. And, uh, uh, it should be a really, really good new piece. Yeah, the the women's line, I, I remember it being a bit of a pipe dream years ago. Nadine yeah. talking about it, I'd love to be involved. And now it has grown to monos, two-piece, insulated, non-insulated, boots, gloves. It, it has become a, a full line of ours now, which is awesome. Um, thanks to a ton of good feedback and, you know, Nadine's involvement. She is very tech-orientated, has great feedback. Uh, and then just the consumers too, yeah. figuring out who needs what in the East Coast, the Midwest, everything. Yeah, we yeah. kind of started with that mountain division and now it's just expanding. Yeah, super passionate consumers out there. I think just being really vocal about um, wanting to get gear that, that works for them and, and we're, we're trying to, to deliver. I think um, you mentioned a lot of the line. Uh, a lot of the other items that we have in women is uh, our base layers, 
mid layers. We've got a, actually a cool new um, base layer mono suit. That mm-hmm. is the uh, the party suit. Yeah, got to check those out. We have those in men's and women's. Um, so definitely uh, thinking about that consumer and focusing on on that uh, that women consumer. Totally. So within the women's line, I think we have another thing with us right now: uh, the glove. Yeah. Um, new for uh, this fall twenty three winter twenty four season is a women's free ride glove. Again, probably a little bit more focused towards the mountain rider, uh, mm-hmm. wanting a little bit more of that that fitted glove, high performance, great grip, uh, and still waterproof, breathable uh, capabilities, but sized for women. Right. Uh, so more of a women's fit, um, still a 70 gram, 40 gram insulation, waterproof, breathable, goat leather palms. Uh, we got three different colors in this. Um but a, a, another added piece, and, and we'll continue to, to be adding more of these That's pieces. one of those little things that I, selfishly being a man, have not really thought about, but I mean, it narrow profile hand, um, it, you're kind of probably drowning in the men's gloves trying to cross-size them and figure out what works best because they're, they're historically wider, so now a nice little narrower profile <laughs> glove that, right. I mean, that's your number one point of contact. Most important is the handlebars. Most important. So this is an awesome addition to the yeah, line. Yeah, less slip, less of that uh, just, you know. It's floating that, around in the glove. Yes, yeah. yes. So i um, excited for that. That's uh, another new piece. And I do, do got to admit, Bill, I'm yeah. kind of jealous of the buckhorn or a white tail sorry colorway oh, in the women's line yeah the mono that's the glove right there the mono that goes with that in the allied is awesome like I kind of thought about ordering a bigger size and wearing it myself i'm a little jealous you, ladies you of the colorway i'm yeah. jealous um and while we're we're talking about some of these new pieces we've also added a couple new pieces for uh kids youth we're kind of our main sizes are probably from the eight year old to the teen. And then at that point they're going into, into small adult, but we are adding a youth boot and a, another couple uh, youth gloves and, yeah. and mittens in there as well. So kids are getting out there also yeah. it's a whole family, a whole family ordeal. It's pretty awesome. I mean, price point is great on the stuff too. You're, yeah. you're getting a, a household name uh, for the kiddos, start them out young and you know, they're going to be comfy, warm, dry. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's most of the, uh, the new items for the mountain. Check out a little bit more of the, the base layers, mid layers. We've got um, the party suits and sin downs a lot of those other pieces are really essential pieces to be comfortable yeah. in the mountains and at least have a, a sin down or some kind of a mid-layer puffy that's in your backpack yeah. um, for a mechanical or uh, some kind of emergency. And now there's just so many variations from the vest to just the regular jacket to the heated. Right. Uh, like there's so many variations you can have for different temperature, different scenarios. And uh, yeah. Um, you know, I've, I got family and friends back in the Midwest who swear by the, the sin down jacket as their second layer. It it is just easy to stow away. It gets warm. They can put in their tunnel bag. They get a little chilly in the evening. It's, it's like you're not, you don't physically feel like you're adding another layer. It just slides right into your jacket seamlessly. Yeah. Uh, it's just a great piece to have with you. Yeah. We're building out more of this level, um, kind of system that allows us to allow customers to fine tune that layering mechanism. Everybody's got a little bit of a different thermostat and uh, some people run hot and I would, you know, get them down into a level one or an FCN Merino. Some people who run cold uh, can go into the sin down hybrids and the sin downs Um, really got to have that range for the, uh, kind of infinite consumer yeah. need that's out there. It's a lot to digest too. There's a lot of different layering options <laughs> and I know we, we try our best to describe it to all of you and uh, you just kind of got to try it on for yourself, check it out, see the weight of it, understand the technology behind it. And there's, there is the perfect combo for everyone. Yeah. I think that's one of the key cool things I see in these events that we go to in the fall uh, heydays and all of the other following up uh, events that we have it's a great time to be able to touch it and feel it, talk to totally. uh, someone in the booth and be able to understand a little bit more. It's a, um, 
uh, a, an important part to that uh, really riding well is making sure you don't have too much on and you don't have too little on. Mm-hmm. Um, so a uh, great opportunity to be able to go to some yeah. of these events and, and touch and feel and chat. And I say it every year, quit wearing your cotton sweatshirts. <laughs> I see that hood flapping out of the jacket and I just cringe inside. Yeah, and like yeah. You might be cozy on the ride up right now, but yeah. a couple hours later when you're drenched in sweat, you're going to be a, a frozen block of ice. The, uh, the cotton is decent insulator when it's dry. Yep. Um, but as soon as it gets wet, it really Game turns over. into a conductor. And comparing them apples to apples to a lot of the base layers and sin downs that we have, they're, they're just so much better at managing moisture and maintaining that insulation. You can honestly live with less uh, if mm-hmm. it's a good high-performance base layer. Uh, Merino or, or our, our FCN level ones, all really good pieces uh, to keep you more comfortable throughout the day. Yep. Yep. Since I learned about layering, my life has been better on the mountain. Great. Great. Right. We got one. We got one convert. <laughs> yeah. All right, Bill. What do we got next here? Uh, Category. Fo- yeah. I want to focus on the trail guys as well. Um, definitely a lot of the trail riders out there. We have uh, really been innovating and bringing more to the table for the trail riders. And this fall 23, winter 24, we got some really cool, new, exciting stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, first one, probably top of the list, is a new full face helmet for the trail rider. It's called the Delta V Commander. This has been a labor of love and in the works for quite some time. This is. Um, so this is a uh, same chassis of the Delta V Carbon uh, that we came out with last year. But this uh, Delta V Commander is packed full of features. It's a fully integrated helmet um, utilizing Cardo's uh, exclusive communication systems, uh, heated lenses, a uh, a chase light uh, in the rear of the helmet, uh, really cool innovative Venturi vents and venting to be able to manage the moisture inside the helmet. Fidlock, of course, um, all really uh, kind of good large format buttons so that you can actually adjust and tune, change the volumes um, while you're riding with a with a glove on. Uh, it actually has a kind of a prime control on the right side and then an active control on your on your brake hand on the left side. And so it is a a really cool helmet you got to go check it out Um, but it really allows you to communicate with the rest of your team if everyone has comms kind of baked in anybody who's got a bolt on uh, an add-on piece of cardo uh, can pair with this Uh, cardo's got a dmc system that allows you to mesh a large group of uh, riders all together really a lot of cool uh, cool technology there I mean, it, it, first of all, it is one badass looking rig. Like it is impressive. Uh, everything's just seamless. Not, not having a giant add on uh, control hanging off the side of your helmet. Yeah, having it integrated into the shell itself is it has a clean factory look, which is exactly what it is. That was the goal. Right. But as we kind of dive a little further into it, I mean, there's some yeah. hidden cool little features in here, like uh, the noise cancellation, the little pump, like all yeah. of that type of stuff. Those yeah. are some yeah. pretty rad hidden features. Yeah, these little gizmos that we have on isolate a lot of the outside noise and allow you to be able to hear mm-hmm. the voice better. And so we've implemented that into this helmet with an air pump that allows you to be able to put the helmet on hit the pump a few times and now it starts to seal over your ears. Um, really cool system actually even makes the helmet fit a little tighter. Yeah. And then when you want to get it off, don't forget, push the little release button. It, it sucks them back out away from your ears and allows you to get it off. Yeah. I'm sure the one next question a lot of people have is how do you power the unit, the whole helmet? Great question. It is equipped uh, with a battery inside the spoiler. Most of the the brains and uh, the cardo module is in the spoiler itself, a small lithium ion battery in the spoiler. So it will um, allows you to charge, uh, mm-hmm. recharge easily. 
and you can turn it on and pair without having to be connected to the machine. Great. Um, so it runs and, and does uh, the comms part and the chase light without being plugged in the machine. If you want to plug in, uh, being plugged into the machine gives you the uh, Ignite Shield heat and charges the battery and then allows your chase light to be more of a 100% right. level of, of brightness. It's great having an option where, hey, it's not a super cold day. I don't need the heated shield right now. I still want to chat with my buddies. Let's put the cord away for the day. Yeah. That's a, a game changer. And yeah. A lot of people have wondered, when are we going to get to that technology? Well, it's finally here and evolving <laughs> quickly. It is. Uh, we wanted to keep the battery small. Um, the Ignite Shield uh, pulls quite a bit of power, so the small battery wasn't able to do that. But this is a, a really good... Um, shell available in small to 2x sizes has a magnetic breath box up on the top a great chin curtain really seals off a lot of the wind uh, large format uh, shield that is really field uh, of view is awesome a great field of view um, so it's just a it's a great helmet comes in a carbon fiber if you want a, you know 150 grams lighter it's mm -hmm. nice to have uh, and also comes in the uh, Delta V Commander, which is a, an ABS. Both of these are DOT and ECE 2206. Um, so the new certification uh, that's been um, enacted for helmets, this is, is part of that ECE 2206 certification. Everything's up to par, safety first, yep. checking off all the regulations, and it's, uh, yeah, ready to hit the trails. And, man, if I was back in the world of trail riding, <laughs> I'd definitely have this on the shelf. It is a uh, really cool uh, innovation to be able to chat uh, without having to stop the machines and, and take your helmet off. Um, one of the things last few years riding, trail riding in Midwest is, is the communication. Right. In order to be able to kind of stop at a stop sign and like, okay, what are we doing? Where are we going? Everybody's got to shut down, take the helmets off, and this kind of communication system allows you just really be able to even talk on the trail. Yeah. Um, really a, a good technology. It's Bluetooth. So it's uh, it's got a, a decent range, um, one, one kilometer line of sight, no problem. And as you daisy chain, you could be talking to someone eight, 10 kilometers right. ahead of you right. if your team is kind of spread out and daisy chained. Yeah. I think that the reoccurring theme here is uh, with all this stuff is just the evolution of the brand over the last few years. I, I just think back down the timeline of when the Delta first came out, just having a heated shield, all of that. And then the original ignites and yeah. uh, you know, the kind of cumbersome battery on the Kingpins when it first came out and where it started and where it's gone in such a short amount of time is awesome. And it's a, it's a testament to what you guys do in design and are constantly trying new things. And I mean, there's, there's one of our guys who works back there who's got circuit boards and wires galore and all this. It looks like a mad scientist in a laboratory, but that's how you figure this stuff out is there's cool people pushing each other and constantly evolving the product to every single year. And I feel like this year there's a lot of cool new uh, like on the tech side between yeah. this helmet, some of the material changes, um, some of the refinements, like on the ether every now and then you have those years where you're like, Holy crap, there's a lot of cool new stuff. There How'd is. this happen? Yeah. Um, this helmet really came from a lot of uh, key consumer feedback as we went to, um, Epping, Novi, some of these shows that are a little bit more trail focused. Uh, we got a lot of feedback and, and customers asking about oh. comms. And so, uh, we are really excited to partner with Cardo, a great, a great partner, a, an expert in this field. They've got a lot of cool stuff going on and we're really excited to be partnering up with these guys and, and more to come. Yeah. Great. Love to hear it. I know there's quite a bit new in the trail division, um, yeah. including some fully new sets. Like brand new names, new introduction from Blank Slate. Brand new. Um, so yeah, that that helmet, that's the that's the head. Um, outerwear pieces. We have really two new collections. Um, first one is a power line jacket mm -hmm. and bib, really meant for all day, any conditions. Um, 
fast trail riding and it's called the power line. Uh, we have a power line jacket, power line bib. It is got a lot of insulation, has a removable uh, vest liner that allows you to be able to strip out some of that insulation. If it's not, it's not 20, 30 below, you probably don't <laughs> need all of it. Um, so that is a, uh, again, just add some versatility to that piece the power line uh, also then has embedded in it uh, some insulation in the body and the arms, has a little bit of a low density foam that's added into the chest, really both for additional insulation and also float mm-hmm. assist, uh, packed with features. And I think one of the coolest things that we explored on the power line is the collar and that seal between the helmet and yeah. the jacket. So it's got a uh, really good, soft, uh, insulating collar that seals between the helmet and the jacket. Yeah. Um, The bibs also just, again, super warm, um, has uh, built-in insulation, foam in the the, uh, knee pads for protection, float, and a little bit extra insulation value. So it's a, a really a... Uh, we're kind of describing that a level three, you know, minus 20 degrees uh, and up. It's it's great in that kind of condition. Um, the, the cool part about the name and it, it, it speaks for itself, the power line. It's, uh, you know, Midwest, East Coast inspired. We've all been out in the trails and seen that power line and, you know, cut and did a couple pow turns or, you know, the trails cross them a lot, run the power line. It's just kind of a staple of those regions of trail riding is at some point you're ending up on a power line or intersecting one. So it's a cool name. I really yeah. like the play on words there. It is, um, I think, influenced by some of our Midwest uh, rep partners. And they they had a little a little bit more say in the, the naming of this one. But it is uh, going to be a really good piece goes well with the Delta V commander and uh, that guy who's serious about uh, getting out trail riding regardless of the temperature. Yeah. Uh, we have a new, another new style, uh, kind of on the other end of the spectrum, a really simple and effective, kind of a great do-all um, coat called the Temper Coat. Um, we've got a Temper Coat and the Temper Overall these are in really bright colors, very good uh, visibility. We've got reflective, um, good durability, and really meant to be kind of that uh, that customer who rides snowmobiles but also has to snow plow, has yeah. to snow blow, has to get somebody out of the ditch, has to get the tractor running. Has to be visible, you know, safety first. <laughs> right, You're standing right. on the side of the highway pulling your buddy out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So these things are are really good, really durable. Um, YKK center front zip just for kind of the best performance and durability that we can get. And got, a, I think, four colors uh, in that yeah. starting right out of the gate. Yeah, I uh, my neighbor uh, is an runs an excavating business and we were shooting this jacket at the house uh one day last winter and he drove up the driveway and he goes what is that i was a jacket for next year and he's like "Uh, put me down he's like i want four of them for my employees he's like this looks perfect we're working through the the winter months you know sitting in a cold excavator digging dirt pushing stuff and he's a snowmobiler he's a he's a big time snowmobiler he's like this is the coolest dual purpose jacket that i can where to work, where to the job site, excuse me, where to the job site, and then also get on the sled. Yeah, I love that, that you're yeah. out there selling. I can't it was an accident. The jacket wasn't <laughs> released yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so okay. we got a little insider information. But. Yeah. I think it's going to be a really good piece. The uh, The temper overall is is similar. Both of them are right around 200 grams of insulation. Um, good, generous pocketing, and just really super clean, super simple, meant for all day, um, kind of living in, in winter. Yeah. Um, so I think that, uh, that temper overall, um, also has 200 grams of insulation, uh, built in knee pads, not a full zip, but easy on and off, mm-hmm. uh, and really priced right. Um, so I think that is, is going to be a, an exciting piece. I'm really curious to see how people um, feel about it when we get out uh, to some of these events. Me too. I'm excited. I feel like there's going to be a lot of guys pumped at heydays to see that. Yeah. So yeah. that'll be fun to see. That's the most enjoyable part about going to any of the shows, but heyday specifically is the first time you guys get to you know feel and touch and try this stuff on for the year. And 
I get pumped seeing people like, this is the piece I want. This is what I've needed in my life. And it's just rewarding to everybody. Yeah. Uh, so that's the two, uh, two new pieces of outerwear. Um, now we've got another, uh, another piece here. And yeah, I, think, I don't know, you know where you class. Are. I think this is across the board. It's across the board. They're going to be in my packet in the mountain as well. I was going to say, this is the new backcountry ignite with climate. Uh, glove. This is a heated glove, uses a battery pack, and uses some really cool technology that Climate has put together that in a lot of ways, when we first started talking with Climate, again, great partners. I just love working with these innovative guys that um, have the same passion that we do of mm -hmm. like wanting to come out with something that really solves the customer's problems. And uh, they have done a lot of great technology in this, and it is similar, as we were talking about, to the S1 Ignite and that, that smart technology that yeah. allows it to heat when you need it, but save power and not heat when you don't need it. Mm -hmm. And that makes this thing more comfortable. You don't get that blowout where you're super hot and now sweating. And then after you get the sweating going on, now it's a little bit more of that, you know, mm -hmm. now you're cold. Um, so this really gets you in that sweet spot and holds it there. Uh, it is running off of a Bluetooth connection. You have a Bluetooth app on your phone. Allows you to be able to tune in a little bit. It even calibrates as uh, what your body temperatures are what kind of activities you're doing and allows it to really be able to tune that heat cycle to what you need. So it uh, can extend the battery life. Um, really kind of tough to be able to identify like how long's the battery last yeah. on this thing? Probably yeah. the first question someone's going to ask. And it's a very hard thing to, to answer because it depends. It's going to vary for every, every user. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Where you're, where you're at, how much heat does it need? It's also hard for us to put this in our test chamber because you have to have a hand in it to turn <laughs> it on. It's a kind of a cool little magic piece. Um, once you put your hand in, it turns on. It's kind of magic. Yeah. I, I, this is my favorite piece of the year for winter 24. Yeah. Um, the big thing right there, as dumb as it might sound, dealing with no buttons, here's the scenario I'm going to paint out to you that I have done <laughs> countless times. Needed my heated gloves, got all toasty, didn't need them anymore, threw them in my backpack, they're still on. Oh, oh, a huge benefit. Yeah, take them out end of the day to ride down, battery's dead. Oh. Now, it's just, you take the glove off. It powers off. Yeah. You don't have to worry about going, oh, crap, did I turn them off or not? Yeah. And ready to go at the end of the day as well. That's a that's a, a benefit that I did not recognize, but you're right. It's so easy to just mm -hmm. throw something on back in the backpack, uh, and then the battery's dead. Yeah. It's, it's done. So, I'm guilty as charged. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when we were partnering with Climate, it was one of the questions we asked as well, how long does the battery last? And they were like, it could be two hours uh, with really a lot of heat uh, required to almost six, six and a half hours that you can get out of it if it is uh, really just kind of mm -hmm. um, heating when you need it uh, and not in, in extreme conditions. But it extends that battery life in much the same way of the S1 Ignite. The smart technology gives you the comfort range that you want and the battery range. Uh, mm -hmm. That that life really is important. What What is the insulation, the gram rating on these? Um, I believe this is 100 grams on the palm, 200 on the back. So okay. still really a, a good insulation. Heating elements are all through the fingers, out onto the thumb. Um, the heating element really is just so much more comfortable. Um, you, I, when I'd used some of the other backcountry ignites, they're really pretty warm and mm -hmm. uh, maybe almost too warm. <laughs> so these are using a little bit more of a kind of, you know, a go monitor, see what the temp is, turn on, go check it again, turn it off. It's just a, a really, really some cool technology. Yeah. And it, I like how it is in a, 
a fairly low profile glove. Yeah. It's not a big bulky trail glove, you know, a 400 gram insulation glove. Right. Um, there's still the maneuverability, dexterity of the fingers while riding. If you want to be riding hard on a cold day, you're not limiting your grip or any maneuverability in your hands. Yeah. There's still uh, really purpose built for snowmobiling with the um, um, top grain goat leather. We got oil tack in the palms just for great grip insulation all the pre-curve i mean it's a super comfortable glove small little gauntlet um you got to have a place to store the battery and the uh, and the button is on a gauntlet um got speed cinch on this another cool little technology that mm-hmm. makes that uh wrist closure really solid um it's packed it's just packed full mm-hmm. of features a very easy rechargeable lithium ion get back from the day yep don't forget mckinney i know charging gotta, gotta I know. charge them I up got too many things to charge though <laughs> i got batteries for cameras that's my big oh, thing yeah. gopros all that oh, so drones worse. yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm usually running out of outlets in hotel rooms <laughs> right. but uh speaking of outlets the comes in an awesome box great packaging uh, everything you need's in there too. Charger, yep. good to go. So yep. it's just kind of a one-time purchase. You don't need to go dig around for accessories and all this. Everything yeah. you needs in the box. Yeah, they are really good. We've got a uh, we got a men's color and a women's color, and that will expand yeah. uh, for sure as we as we continue with this. But it is a good piece. Uh, we'll touch on this a little bit more and show some more of those details of how to connect it to the app and. Uh, you know, it's a couple little setup steps there. Don't get, don't get daunted by that. It's I believe actually, sorry to interrupt you there. This is a good plug. Tristan, who's sitting over here behind camera has been working on these how to videos and we just came out with it. We're not looking for subscribers on it. It's just a tool for you. Yeah. There's a YouTube channel we launched called 509 university and it has every video of how to how to properly charge, how to change lenses, how to whatever it is. There's, uh, videos constantly going up on there. We're still loading it up. But if you have questions of how these things operate, anything in your Ignite family, non-Ignite family, um, yeah. those videos are currently being produced and actively uploaded day by day. So that's an awesome tool that I know we've needed for years. It's just been a, yeah. a lot of products. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of stuff to cover, but it is live and available to you now at 509 University on YouTube. That's a good plug there, mm-hmm. McKinney. I, I saw the opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I I think that is needed as we come out with more of this product that is more technical. You got to get up and over that learning curve and understand what makes this thing tick and how do I keep it charged and um, I think these tools will be super helpful once you get kind of up to speed. Then it's yeah. it's pretty straightforward. But I I think those are good resources for us to do because i mean we put it in the instructions but uh, who reads the instructions i think it's great to have a video out there that uh really shows how to do this uh kind of you know step a to z yeah and they're short and sweet and to the point you're not sitting there watching 15 minutes it's a a minute to two minutes tops and you get all your questions answered so i'd love to chat more about this one we'll get into more of those details but that is definitely one to check out uh this season as we as we get out to these events uh, dealers are all going to be, uh, well stocked in those and, uh, definitely going to be yeah. a, a good piece. Yeah. Do you have anything else on your list? Otherwise I can think of just a couple random things. We've got, we've got more. There's, there's more coming. I think we're going to, um, here's my little plug. We're, we're going to okay. have a little holiday gift guide that maybe we'll Ooh. do in a, a little later. We've got some really good, um, Items that I think everyone's going to love, yeah. um, new, distinct, you know, something that, you know, snowmobile has got everything. Uh, we've got some new products out there that uh, would be great. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more through that in a holiday gift guide, uh, but we've definitely got some other kind of heated and a little bit more fun and exciting items that Sweet. we'll, that we'll touch on in, uh, in a little bit. Yeah. And then, yeah, just overall for everybody uh, who's longtime followers of the brand, we still continued with the the classics. I mean, like the Stoke is still out there, the Altitude 2.0, the Tactical 2.0, Evolve. All of those are still available for Winter 24. A few new colorways across the board. Um, Not a ton of revisions at this point because they currently just work. Yeah. Um, you know, as time goes on, everything evolves, but at this, at this current model year 24, there's some awesome new colorways to check out and all of the other lines. 
Yeah, a lot of um, kind of the key staple items are are still in line. Sorry, we didn't get to them all. Um, but I, I do think there are some essentials out there that are, are worth mentioning. Our protection uh, still oh, be out there. The armor is a yeah. must have. Yeah. Um, so have that in men's, women's, and kids. Uh, just really a great peace of mind protection, low profile enough to go under a jacket, uh, but um, has has saved some ribs already. <laughs> so, yep, I um, can I can testify to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the the lower you are on the learning curve, you're just starting <laughs> out, I'd recommend getting an armor because um, then you just don't have to worry as much. Yeah. It's it's ready there for you. Yeah. Well, cool, Bill. Um, I kind of want to quickly before we wrap up here, put you in the spot. Your favorite go-to gear set. Obviously, we here have a little different um, outlook depending on you know what region you're riding in. We ride Mountain West here. Um, you do get back occasionally to the Midwest and do trail riding. You, you've you've dabbled yeah. in all of it, but it's Saturday. It's time to go ride. What is for sure in your pack? Uh, interesting question. I'll I'll answer the mountain question first, but I'll I'll add a little uh, trail kind yeah, of derivative do. there on the end. Um, a lot of my riding this last year, you know, it was kind of a crazy year. We had to kind of travel and go chase some snow around a little bit. Mm-hmm. So um, I rode a lot more in Idaho and Utah. A little bit colder, a little bit higher elevations. And uh, my go-to piece, uh, my whole go-to outfit was a uh, carbon fiber altitude helmet, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. Great, lightweight, fits well with the goggles. Uh, Aviator and or X7 S1s, I think I had both in the, in the mix. Um, I actually was wearing an ether jacket and a stoke bib this year. I know oh, that really? might sound a little funny, but it was a, yeah. I felt an optimal piece. The stoke and the stretch makes that bib just feel so comfortable Mm -hmm. and and fit well. Um, But the ether in the jacket is just such a great water shedding piece. A little bit lighter. I just, I was, I thought I'd try it and I ended up wearing it all season. So it just was a really good go-to. Knee braces, uh, you know, I got old knees (laughs) and um, banging around a lot. So I had, you know, knee braces are, are essential. Um, and merino i use the fcn merino party mm-hmm. suit all season oh you did get to dabble with that i huh? did i uh, had to test that it's and in my cart for sure i just love that piece it took me a couple of days to almost get used to not having a waistband yeah. down there and all the layers it felt like there was something untucked or missing a little too much freedom almost it was huh? too much freedom <laughs> and i just had to kind of celebrate it because it's like it's all there it's doing its job but it just doesn't feel as yeah. as restrictive uh the stoke glove i think is my go-to glove in almost yeah. all conditions um i think the colder higher elevations in idaho utah those i um, still work great um, if you get here in the Northwest and you're in more of that, uh, that wet or snow, I, I probably go back to the free ride. Um, it just kind of depends on the conditions. Now, uh, an interesting kind of derivative, if we're, um, going trail riding and I, I do like to get out and, and do a little bit of the trail riding as well. I will still use a stoke uh and recently even the stoke zi that's a a stoke piece it's three layer awesome piece that is a an awesome piece it's hard to it's hard to place it too i mean it crossover is. is kind of where it falls it is it's it, good for both yeah um but that stoke zi with a a layering system underneath it gets yeah. you to minus 10 minus 20 degrees trail riding you're comfortable and it's such a versatile piece. You could wear that same piece mountain riding if you right. wanted to. So uh, that's that's my kind of go-to. I'd still, um, I wore quite a bit of the Delta Vs, doing a lot of testing. I think a full face in trail conditions is really nice, really comfortable. Mm-hmm. And the comms uh, almost has become essential to where mm-hmm. that is uh, just such a nice piece to have. 
Um, but that that is a, a combo there of, of, you know, a lot of the same pieces can be used, mountain riding and trail riding. Yeah. Um, strategically, yeah. strategically, yeah. you got to kind of be in that layering system, but that allows you to really push that, uh, plus 20 degrees to minus 20 degrees right. pretty easily. Right. Well, you heard it from the man himself, the, the tech guru, Bill, uh, appreciate you taking the time to do this. Like I said, there was people messaging us saying how helpful this podcast was last year. Um, you know, also I pushed him to come talk to you at Heydays, and I know you had quite a few people bring it up. So yeah. I urge you guys again, if you have questions, Bill, you'll be at Heydays, right? Not going to Heydays oh, this no, year. No, you're not. Yeah. Oh, I'm selling lies to you guys. Sorry. You're in good hands. The, Bill, the customers will, will have some other good techie people there. We, we, we bring nothing but the best except Bill this year. <laughs> so, <laughs> Either way, um, yeah, first thing to kick everything off for winter here is going to be heydays, and then we are all over the country from uh, Syracuse to Epping to Salt Lake, uh, Denver, Novi, Novi, Boise, yeah. uh, all over. So if you guys are East Coast, Midwest, West Coast, you got a good shot at coming out to a snow show, checking things out, asking you know an employee here that is highly trained, knows the stuff inside to out, um, and get exactly what you need for the season. Otherwise, hopefully, we helped you quite a bit here, and you can just walk into your dealer now, and you got a bit of a roadmap of what you're looking for. So, yeah, I'm excited. Um, thanks for having me on. I, I think it's gonna gonna happen here pretty quick. It always mm -hmm. uh, always goes from heydays to snow to, to snow. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm I'm excited for it. Cool. Well, thank you, Bill. Thank you, everybody. If you are listening on Spotify and Apple, thank you for all the great reviews. That keeps pushing this to more people. And if you're on YouTube, thanks for watching. Uh, leave us a comment. gives us ideas for future episodes. And we will see you guys at Heydays.